inside. The engineers and the commercial varieties. The artists and the dreamers. We are proud of what makes life worth living. I just want to make sure this thing works properly. Um, you good over there, Eddie? All right. Can you hear us? Is our, our sound working? I, I can hear you. I haven't heard Eddie yet. Oh, uh, there he is. <laughs> Hello. Well, I guess we'll get straight into it. All Welcome right. Welcome to today's episode of Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. Today I have visiting us the Unfit Mothers, the uh, stars, stage and screen, and your nightmares. Give them a hand if you're at home and in a place where you won't get stared at too much for clapping. Well, thank um, you. Thank you very much. Ge gentlemen, would you introduce yourselves? Yeah, uh, hi, I'm uh, Disno, and this is uh, Eddie Woodbooker. Eddie Woodbooker. All right, well, uh, the premise of the show is that we are talking to weirdos today. Uh, I wonder if you could tell me, uh, either separately or collectively, in what ways, in today's society at least, you are weirdos. Well, I mean, just look at us, for starters. I mean, we, we don't exactly blend in with the rest of the crowd, right? Uh, other than that, we do a lot of weird things on stage. Stuff that's out of the ordinary, as uh, you might expect. Uh, I mean, a Coke habit's a little weird nowadays. It was big in the 80s, not so much anymore. Can attest. Yeah. And I, our style of music, what we play, I guess, it's a little uh, out there. We play something we like to call penis music, and it's, uh, it's really good stuff, but it uh, takes some getting used to. In this music. That's right. All right. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, we are recording this in the basement of a crack house, so. As expected. Uh, so, Uncle Disno, uh, I, I get the sense you will be doing most of the talking today. That's correct, yeah. Eddie, he, uh, he do not really talk very much. I've never been able to coax out of him why exactly that is. I'm pretty sure he can speak. I just don't know if he likes to. All right. So, uh, I heard that. So, Uncle Disno, uh, could you tell the nice people a bit about how we know each other? Yeah, actually, uh, I started doing Dawn's Uprising, and I've been around doing other things, killing other people, but the very first time, uh, it, you know, I was at the very first Gonzo Rising, which is the all, all weirdo review by uh, this fine person here and uh, it was it was a heck of a show we were just I, I just sort of got a call one day would you would you like to do this I've been putting together this show and I said absolutely 100% I and so I showed up and uh, I've been at every single one since and, uh, I believe you might be the only one because I think Johnny didn't make it one of the I, I think you're the last one. Oh boy. Now I got that sort of Damocles hanging over my head for the rest of my life, right? <laughs> um, I gotta I, keep the rest going. I believe you and I may have met at least in some form before that call, though. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, you're you're terrorizing other... children and such. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I was, uh, for a long time, a staple at, uh, some, some, uh, other dimension, but essentially, yes, terrorizing children, and then everybody walks in the front gate, but, and that's, that's where we initially connected, yeah, but I'm a lot different than I was that night, but, uh, sort of shed that old skin. So if I were to um, explain to someone who was on my call today, uh, Uncle Disno and Eddie Woodbooker, 
um, how how should I how should I explain you to them? Well, I mean, visually you're looking at a uh, a weird cracked out clown and a weird cracked out Sasquatch, I guess. And uh, if if you want to explain me personally, I I guess you could say I used to be a clown. I think I was pretty funny. The other clowns didn't like me very much, so they uh, they sort of threw me out of the circus because I was uh, a little too mean for them. My standards of comedy were uh, beneath them, allegedly. And uh, one day I just sort of, good Lord, muzzle this thing. How did this get in here? Just relax, okay? Sorry, one of the many attack dogs we have guarding this place. There's all kinds of crackheads down here. But it's essentially one day I found myself in possession of strange eldritch powers. It's a whole rigmarole how I got there. But now I, I use my weird supernatural abilities to entertain and delight children at parties. And uh, Eddie, well, how should we describe Eddie? I was out in the forest one day uh, trying to get rid of something, you know, that's, again, a whole other story. But anyway, I was out there digging this roughly human-sized hole in the ground. And, oh, man, this, I just heard that. Good golly. What is it? What do you smell, girl? All right. But I was I was out in the forest digging this roughly human shaped hole. As you and do. yes, as, as you do. And I heard this weird guitar blow in on the breeze. This, this this these sweet licks, this strange electric melody. And then out from behind a tree stepped uh, stepped Eddie here, and uh, allegedly is what I've been pieced together. He was, or he claims he was raised by a tribe of Sasquatch people. Uh, from birth, but I think he might have just done a little too much acid back in the day. Now, you, you bring up something interesting. I've recently learned that a former president of the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, claims that Sasquatch is a singular being um, who is actually the actual biblical Cain. Can, can Eddie speak to that at all or, or verify? What are, do you have any thoughts? Do you know, is there one Bigfoot or many? Well, I, I think is, as he claims, there are many big feet Sasquatch out there. Uh, and I suppose he's one of them now, honorarily uh, indoctrinated by their tribe. Uh, so I, I guess technically there's more than one just by virtue of him. So I don't know. I don't know if I can uh, co-sign that or attest to that at all, that uh, Sasquatch was uh, a, a biblical creature cursed to uh, for murdering his brother. I don't know. It's this whole... It, 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 does the curse involve immortality if there's only one that turned him into Sasquatch? And that's why he's, there are still Sasquatch sightings? The, the, uh, the story is that nothing was allowed to harm him, and so some people believe that means death itself cannot harm him. Uh, but I generally don't combine my cryptozoology and, and theology all that much. Yeah, I, I think that might be a little bit of a leap, because I mean, there are, there are sightings all around, you know, all around the country. And other countries. So, either, either he can teleport or fly or something, or he just runs from the best, I'm not sure. And, and relatives uh, in uh, the Yeti up in up in the Himalayas. Yeah, Do you know any um, any abominable snow people, Eddie, or is that not really something that you're uh, you're familiar with? One or two, maybe. Yeah, there's probably some big family reunion where they all they all hook up somewhere in the woods. I don't know. That would be a party. That uh, would have maybe something to see. Now, uh, on to other topics. As you, you know, I am very much about the weirdo, the outsider, the, uh, 
the uncentered, what you might say in, in poli sci circles, what would you say, as a pair of weirdos, is the purpose or or the the mission of the weirdo in in our world? Well, that's really difficult. Um, I think at least the, I, my, my personal feelings on this is that I'm sure every single weirdo has a different mission. Every single weirdo is weird because they are an outsider. They have no, you know, they, they might have some ties to the regular world, but they're not they're, they're not acting on anyone's interests other than their own a lot of the time, I feel like. And that's, 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 you, you, you have this weird idea and you go and do it. So everybody's going to have their own weirdo philosophy, right? Now, my personally, my whole philosophy is I just, I just want to give people a good laugh. I want to, I want to entertain the masses and, uh, you know, it's, I, I think, I think weird is entertaining. This is something I picked up from my days in the circus. Is that that was always, you know, people would come and see the, uh, the 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 big shows with all the acrobatics and the clowns. But where everybody would always really want to hang out was at the side shows. They want to see the weird and the bizarre. You know, you could pack a tent just by you know sewing two creatures together that have nothing to do with each other and claiming that it's some hybrid mutant or mythological creature and uh, sticking it in a jar of formaldehyde and people pay through the nose to see it. Even if they know it's bogus, they just want to see that weird out there, creepy stuff a lot of the time. Remember when, when I was a kid, I, I paid good money to see the world's largest rat, which is clearly an opossum. But it was... <laughs> yeah. So, it's... You know, they, they pulled me in. You know, the largest rats in the world that I'm aware of, there are these rats, it's really interesting, down in Gambia, down in the Gambia, the Gambian pouched rat. And these rats, they're, they're like twice the size of a normal rat. They're big fellas. And they use them a lot of the time down there for locating unexploded ordnance, mines and such, and clearing mine. It's because these rats, they can train them to smell explosives. I don't know how, don't ask me. But you'll see a guy walking around in a field with a rat on a leash and the rat, because it's not heavy enough to set off the mine, will just stop and sit on top of the mine and wait for somebody to come pick it up. And then they uh, they give them bananas as treats, I suppose. How does it work? Have you ever had any uh, trouble being a weirdo in society? Well, I mean, yeah, I've been arrested more times than I can count uh, for, you know, st stuff ranging from all the way to uh, things that most people would absolutely probably consider to be morally reprehensible, all the way down to just, uh, you know, random, you know, the, the one thing they'll do is they'll just slap you with disorderly conduct. That's sort of their catch-all. We don't like you, you're causing a scene, go to prison and get out of here. That's just what they'll do, just to get you off the street. Boy, I've found myself on the receiving end of that all the time. Grave robbing, busking without a license, and disorderly conduct. You know, they'll just tack it on. Public urination works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, all at the same event sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, it's... I've been to some crazy parties, let me tell you. I believe it. So what does the future hold to the unfit mothers? Well, uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep on doing shows. Uh, we're going to put out maybe a few singles or something here and there, but really we are focused, I think, primarily on live entertainment. It's not right. I mean, we like people to come out and see us. We like that it's, it's always, even if it's a huge crowd, it's always a, a very intimate experience watching something live, you know? And I, I just think that's fun. And that's, you know, kind of what we like to do. We like to entertain and we also like to educate children about, you know, the dangers and things that go on in society. So it's very, it, it's easy to do that in a live format, you know, and that's sort of, uh, sort of uh, our game plan. Keep doing live shows. Um, there's a cat in here now, it's raining cats and dogs. Anyway, excuse me. We're uh, we're we're mostly going to be doing live shows, as I've said. But then we'll 
occasionally kick out a, uh, a single here and there, I would think. And also, probably some like weird bootleg tapes of just some of our rehearsals. Whenever we come up with a fun song that, you know, uh, we don't really know how to work in our act. Hi, bud. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get a, a little rip of that from some recording software and throw it out there for the masses to hear. Do people still do bootleg tapes? Well, we're bringing them back in style. I know some people who still do them, but I really think that is like the peak way to experience our genre of music. Penis music sounds the best on a cassette tape that's been played through a Walkman three or four hundred times and it's kind of starting to get all messed up and crackly. So, uh, what can you tell us about penis music? We're going to play a sample for the audience at home. Uh, sure. So I'll get to experience it directly, but uh, what can you tell me? What what makes it distinctive? So penis music, typically, at least the way I define it, I'm sure other people, it's such a broad genre, almost anything can be classified as penis music, uh, provided I think it meets certain criteria. It's got to be, it, 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 usually it's high energy. It can have some lower, slower bass songs, but oftentimes it's very, uh, high, uh, you know, very high, fast music. And it's very strange. It makes you start to feel like your mind's coming unglued at the seams a little bit. And don't give the cat beer. That's not a good idea. I've seen this guy when he's on a bender, he'll trash the place. But how should I put this? A song can be part penis music too. You know, it, as long as it has like a bit that sticks out, hence the, the name penis music. It's got something that just comes out of left field randomly and you're like, oh, am I listening to a different song now? What's going on? So that's a kind of penis music. The other kind is just weird. Just, it, it makes you feel very ill, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to jump and dance and move around. It's groovy, you know? That uh, and that it is, uh, as as the audience will know. I think at this point we will take a break. Not you and I, uh, but the audience at home will have a brief fade to black and a video clip from Gonzo Rising Resargat, which happened a couple weeks ago. And then we'll be right back with Richard. Unfit Mothers.
with his knob and bar, but his money and his axe is cheap, it's sure, and his million be washed out once more. And there they lay in the sunny skies, and all day long, in upstaring eyes, and a white sunset, and clouds on the rise, and yo, oh, oh, and the one with the rum, the ball. what they do what do you think of that by the way i want to be very clear are you unfit mothers or the unfit mothers well we do have a sign i believe it just says unfit mothers so we are unfit mothers okay. we don't claim to be the definitive unfit mothers because there are lots and lots of unfit mothers out there you know all kinds of sorry situations where uh you know, they probably shouldn't have kids, but they do somehow. So that's, yeah, we, we, we don't want to claim to be the unfit mothers, but we definitely are, or would be if we had kids, unfit mothers. I mean, if you're feeding the cat beer, that's, that's probably a sign. Yeah, all the, all, all the, the animals in this house kind of, you know, they, they know how to party too. If you had almost like a magic wish, if, if money and time and energy were no limiting factor, what would your ideal gig be? What, what would be your ideal show or production? Oh, boy. Well, just something really, really big. We like a large scale. That's, that's sort of what sets us apart from some other weirdo acts who, who all do great jobs but we always like to make things as big as possible. We like to have a lot of set pieces, a lot of special effects and things. So if, if we have like unlimited money to put a show together, it would almost be like, I imagine watching a theatrical performance, uh, like just an entire play, like an hour and a half of unfit mothers with like different set changes and, three or four costume changes a piece and a bunch of different characters and all kinds of things like that. Think okay. like, uh, like Pee Wee's Playhouse on methamphetamine. Like a, a, a penis music opera. Exactly. Excellent. Well, maybe that'll happen. We can cross our fingers. Who knows? The, um, the, the final thing I always ask, what 
do you want us to know that I haven't asked you about? That's a good question. Well, mostly, I just want to let everybody know to keep an eye out for us. Keep an eye, mostly on our Facebook page at Unfit Mothers. Make sure it's, it's got a picture of me and Eddie as the, uh, the little profile picture. It's our, our logo. And yeah, keep, just keep an eye out there because we've got some more stuff coming down the pipe soon. And uh, I think everybody will really enjoy it. Cool. So your, your primary social media is Facebook? That is correct. I've considered getting into other social medias and opening things up, which we, I'm sure, inevitably would have to do the further and further we grow. But I don't know. I just hate social media. I hate the Internet. It's, it's a cesspool. And that's coming from me. That means something. That's true. You're, you're, you're very visual. You'd probably do well on TikTok, but I don't know if you want to get into that um, circle of hell. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want a bunch of spyware for the Chinese government installed on my phone, I'm going to be honest. Well, there is that as well. <laughs> All right. Um, Uncle Disno, Eddie Woodbugger, thank you for your time. This has been uh, here. I've forgotten the name of my own damn show. Here comes the Weirdo Parade. And uh, I've got a little bit of music to play us out. Any second. Bye bye, kid.